Morning everyone. So this is part two of the low wage ramble. This is the commentary version of things. I'm on the pit lane for the C1 Endurance Series. They've all just gone out for qualifying and shortly I'll be going on air with the live stream. Richard John Neal over there looking after the Mazda Super Cup podium. But uh, yeah, hopefully we'll vlog a bit of the day, what I get up to, running up and down the pit lane looking after these C1s. I talk about consummate professionals, I don't think there's few that are better than this man. Over there, Scott Woodwiss, just with the drivers of the RFCC, so the Mazda Super Cup race has just finished. Richard John Neal and the crew there and the circuit comms as well. So we've got, they're just uh, interviewing six drivers and then hopefully we've got a segment coming up during qualifying where we could talk about the season in these throughout season. those events now i mentioned that we are here for the silver lake c1s they are having their practice session right now and it's time to invite rob lewis over to uh, chat to us rob of course you will know and love as our pit lane reporter making his debut with us last year on the 24 hours good to see you rob you thank you for joining thank you for joining us and uh, I just was in the square, you know your spot, top man. Um, first of all, I was going to say there was a Robbie Lewis mentioned in the last ep episode of Endeavour last week, if you watched that. It's not you, is it? No, it's no. not quite me. No, it's, um, I'm not moonlighting, it's fine. Um, but it's, it's got a very excitement this weekend because it's effectively a warm-up. We've got a four-hour race here, but of course the big one is in May. It's the 24 hours. So we've still got a massive grid of C1s here. You know, 61 cars, immaculately prepared. I had a walk up and down last night night after I'd finished doing what I was doing and, and just the preparation the sheer preparation that's gone into the cars this year is phenomenal um, they really are taking better care of them I spoke to Robin Welch this morning he's very impressed as well I mean some of the cars up and down the grid AASP Sandown Motorsport Silver Lake have got two uh, brand new cars out as well lots more cars being built um, uh, are you paid per Silver Lake by the way <laughs> <laughs> only on the day job only on the day job but um, you know I'll reiterate again it's literally up and down the grid we've got the likes of Jade, Cook, Jade Edwards, Josh Cook coming down with their car, Sylvain Rubio and there, there's still lots of stories to continue from last year so at the end of last year we had that wonderful spate of victories, for, I think it was four in a row for Emax Motorsport with the little, uh, little and large as I call them, senior and junior um, at the wheel and I'm kind of thinking to myself okay are they kind of coming into this with a bit of pressure because they know that everyone's maybe up their game um, You've got JW Bird as well, they're coming into it, Phil House and uh, Nick Beaumont, they're going to have the bit between their teeth, they, they kind of want to get that elusive race win, they've had a lot of podiums, they've been up there in terms of pace, but they haven't quite got there. Um, and there's always been those people that have just been on the cusp of getting that good result, Scuderia Polo Rosso, they had a good result, you know, CCK, FDL Packaging, all of those teams. Hardcore model makers won the first round last year, didn't they, Snap? Absolutely, and no one expected that to happen. Um, but I mean, the key is, I, uh, you know, all through the year, you'll see me dancing up and down the pit lane, showing you exactly what you should be doing on the pit lane, um, just to spell the rules out for you. It's all in the pit work with these cars because the speed is so, I wouldn't say slow, you know, it's, it's a fast paced speed, but it's all about momentum. So if you make a 20 second mistake in the pit lane, that could cost you for about an hour's worth of racing to make that back up to the cars in front. It's, it's so narrow. And with that, I mean, even I was talking to a, a team yesterday, they They've developed uh, a, a swap over mechanism for their GoPro to make sure that it's done quicker because of course one of the golden rules is oh you've got to make sure you can swap the GoPro and again all this ingenuity going on up and down the pit lane and I've got to give credit to the C1 Racing Club Robin Welch and his team um, one of the rules he's also clamped down on we, we actually spoke about this yesterday Richard was the infamous 15 minute rule that's come in so as the sessions get under the way the racing gets underway a lot of the cars last year were using the green flag lap and just pulling in during the green flag lap getting their pit stop out of the way and getting gone and getting an advantage from it which is very good but Robin thought yeah we'll put a bit of a stop to it because it did get a bit chaotic at times um, so he's very quickly nipped that in the bud so again that's just got to change the mindset of some of the teams change the tactics around a bit can't even pit under safety car so it really does mix it up it makes it a nice even spread across all the cars and I'm just really looking forward to this racing season and starting here.
I was going to do this as an interview, but you've just done the whole thing, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. And that's why you do the business on pit lane so well uh, uh, as, as well. Um, the other point I made yesterday, and, I'll, and it's backing up a point you've already made, Rob, is about how good the cars look and how, how great they are. Much as we love people joining us on the live streams, I urge people to come and see the cars in the flesh because they are so well prepared. We've got that Red Bull lookalike just going past. They are immaculate. They must be seen in the tin. You can eat, seriously, some of these cars, you open the doors, you can eat your dinner off them. They're absolutely clean. They're putting mats down to make sure you don't scratch the paint. And it's just, and it's exactly what you, um, exactly what you need on a, on a field like this. I mean, a lot of people would maybe think that the racing that goes on, and you know, oh, they rub each other up a bit. None of that happens here. Um, you know, all of the teams are immensely proud of their cars, and they put that heart and soul into the preparation of these cars. So it's great to see up and down the grid. And there's some really, really stunning liveries out there as well. They do look absolutely fantastic, don't they? And uh, your role, obviously, over the weekend, yesterday was a, a racing day. We didn't get a chance to, to talk to you. We, we were looking at class winners and everything else, but second in class, I think, in race two? Yeah, so I was out with the modified Ford Series in my focus. Um, if you caught the last race of the day, you couldn't have missed me because I had the bright blue headlights. But, um, yeah, a bit of a varied day. I had a gear cable fall off in qualifying. Uh, reasonable race. I'm only back in class B, so I'm not right up at the front with the quick guys like James Allen and, and, and co. But, yeah, just had a good race. And then I stuck the wets on for the last race and had a bit of fun. Got up to 13th overall, set in class absolutely mint yeah brilliant stuff so um, so really busy weekend for you um, I think we're probably there we've got qualifying going out a format for the drivers does everybody have to qualify or, or do three laps or what's what's the the idea there for the drivers because it's it can be difficult if you've got two or three drivers to make sure they all get a decent amount of time in the car yeah so everyone's obviously every driver's got to have their three laps they've got the who tag system so the timing people will know what drivers are going out and when they're going out and it gives everyone a chance to maybe bed in again we spoke about pit stops it gives everyone a chance to bed in get the pit procedures right get the driver changes right because if they muck it up during the race it can cost you a decent result seriously it could drop you 10 places just on snap you know snagging a belt anything like that can really cost you well, it's going to be a fascinating four hour race it's their time out on track now rob thank you very much look forward to seeing you in pit lane thank you for your time Cheers. and uh thank you to andy bacoon for this morning's part we're going to take a little bit of a break i think Right, qualifying's just finished for the C1s. I'm going to go see my favourite team. It's camera. See, this is my favourite team. Scudero Polo Rosso. So hopefully, where, where are you guys? Top four? Fifth. Top five. Oh, fifth. Okay, that's not too shabby. Send it. Send it and see. Okay. What we got? What we got? Is this going to be suitable for YouTube? Yeah. We're not going to send it. Go like Clark. Clark. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm just in the camper with Robin. The reason we're scrambling at the moment. Say hi, Rob. How you doing? So we've got That's this. Hi, Rob. Yeah. We've got. <laughs> We've got this trophy here that we're about to present to AASP Racing, Spirit C1 Racing. So we're doing this for these C1 socials. And then um, this is the last race before we go racing yeah, for real. So the, the then I'm on the mic. So we're going to get this done, get on the C1 socials. We'll, I'll clip a bit of it and put it in now. And then... Uh, Check out AASP Recovery as well, the good guys. Very good guys. So um, every team down this pit lane is just. We'll, you'll see as this vlog goes along this year. So, but yeah, let's go and reward this trophy and then get ready for the live stream. Yeah. Right. So Robin's got a trophy in hand. There's a very special room. Oh, they're all hiding. Right. So this is super super random. We just do random trophies and C1 for. <laughs> right. Of C1 and that is all about it. Look at that thing. So, so basically, this team they've been doing this for years. They have a proper laugh. And they do what C1's meant to be. They turn up, they come here, they have fun. And they're always smiling. And we just thought I'd reward them for doing that. So this is AASP Recovery. Hit them up. They're on Instagram. Hey, go, guys. You've got a Spirit of C1 Racing Awards. Just quickly, how was qualifying? Are you guys happy? Yeah, very happy. Very happy. Plan for the race? Yeah. Uh, you know, go and do our best. Enjoy Both it. cars get out and do what we can when we can. Take the stamp and send it then. <laughs> it's, send it, you know, just try and do what we can with what we can. Fantastic. I'll try and come and catch up with you on the live stream at some point. 
Thanks, guys. So that is our Spirit of C1 Racing winners for this weekend, AASB Motorsport. The RSCC uh, platforms. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a really, really exciting race this. Four hours, strategy aplenty, three mandatory pit stops. Regardless of whether you do a, drive, a driver change, you have to come into the pit lane three times. There are minimum driver times, which we'll get into in more depth a little bit later on. But for now, let's focus on the start of the race. You can't pit within the first 15 minutes, so we're guaranteed at least 15 minutes of all action racing here around the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. 566, six, Mac Tools Racing on the pole position. They're the red machine on the right hand side. Trojan Motorsport alongside them, the fluorescent yellow. Two by two they come past the national pit lane. The red lights are on. And the opening round of the 2023 Silver Lake C1 Endurance Series burst into life here at Silverstone. And they're four abreast already before they even get to the start line as these cars slowly but surely get themselves up to speed. It will be Trojan Motorsport who lead them through the first corner. I think that was JW Bird Motorsport. 347 car up into second place because Mac Tools Racing did not get such a good start from the front row, uh, from the pole position indeed, on the grid. Out of Stowe they will keep on pouring down towards Maggots and Beckett's for the first. Okay, race has started. Uh, first 15 minutes, very good, very close racing. Unfortunately the hashtag blessed car ended up in the gravel, so I did a quick live stream interview with Colin interview from the pit lane for the year and unfortunately not a very nice one we all saw the hashtag blessed car I've got uh, Colin by South Colin you must be absolutely gutted I mean yeah I mean I was halfway through my chicken burger and now I had to uh, come out and have a look at what's going on um, yeah not ideal 10 minutes in or 15 minutes whatever it was um, I think the main thing is he was seen to be getting out the car. I don't actually know what happened. Um, I'm not sure whether the live stream has caught it or not, but I heard it went over four times. Um, but yeah, the main thing is he was seen getting up, getting away from the car. Um, that's, I can't really hope for much more than that, really. So yeah, and the car can be fixed when we finally see it. We're still waiting for it, um, and we'll go from there. Absolutely. I mean, with the race being so short, effectively one of the shortest we have this year, there's not really a chance for it to get out in this race. But the pace you guys ultimately proved, does that give you a bit of hope going to the 24 hour? Uh, we're not in the 24 hour this year, um, but it's, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're confident in our pace. Um, I mean, Mark, uh, myself and Chris, we've been doing this for what, second, this is our second year, maybe third. Um, and we've, yeah, we've, we've always been there or thereabouts. We're just learning little bits and pieces as we go along. Um, I've got Cameron Mount Jeremy were with him today and I'll introduce you to him shortly. So, um, yes, four hours is go and the pit stops have started already. Right, back down here in the pit lane and I've managed to grab Sylvan Rubio after a mega first stint in the Mac Tools racing car. Sylvan, you stuck it on pole yesterday. Mega first stint today. We do have it on our own knowledge, however, from one of the other cars. You had a bit of a moment through Beckett's, but how was that first stint for you? That was crazy. So first, I completely messed up the start. I was in fourth gear instead of second, so of course everybody disappeared. And then uh, I just tried as hard as I could. I mean, you know, all this is still a bit new to me. Uh, uh, I'm discovering every day. <laughs> right, just here in the pit lane, cameraman Jeremy. Very nice man. So we've done quite a few interviews. Scott's in the background there. Scott Woodward's the RSCC, so he's doing a lot of media stuff. Race is about halfway through, and we're about to do a segment on basically the pit lane practices and procedures. So I'll cut that up now. I'm in the Sandown Motorsport garage. They've kindly let us use their pit slot and a bit of their equipment. So I'll start off with the fueling. Obviously an extinguisher and you've got your fuel jug right here. You need two people to fuel a car. One to make sure that if there is a fire, anything goes wrong, they can put it out and one to put the fuel in. Now, it's these tough jugs. They're sealed. There's no vents on them. If there is a vent on it, it's sealed. And they've got these. So these are given out to all of the, well, they buy them from the club. And this basically ensures an even flow across all of the cars everyone's getting the same amount for the same amount of time and it's up to the teams to really strategize how much fuel goes in do they fill it up to half a can do a full can it depends what works for them and I'll tell you what a few of these teams do do their research on how much fuel they can put in every time now if we look in front of me here what a lot of the teams have been getting wrong they've got a bit dozy over the winter they've got a bit forgetful this big thick line here it's in the driver's 
Service Briefing notes. You can't stop your car beyond this line and work on it. You'll get a penalty. It's got to sit in at a 45 degree angle. There's already a couple of cars that have actually been caught out doing that, strangely enough. So the car comes in 40 kilometres an hour. It's a reduced speed limit for safety, especially in these packed pit lanes as the fueling and everything has just come underway now. As we're talking to you, there's lots and lots of cars that have come in up and down the pit lane. So it's 40 kilometres an hour. The car comes to a stop, 45 degrees. And don't forget, four people can work on the car or can touch the car at any one point, but that includes the driver. So if the driver sat in the car, he can only have three blokes working around the car one at a time, whether it's changing wheels, jacking the car up, doing anything, repairing bodywork, anything. Four people, including the driver. And it's little mistakes like that, little details, even in these shorter races, that can cost you a win, a podium, a top 10, a good result. Just a little mistake like that, because if it happens, bang, you get a penalty and you end up sitting in the box up there. So. It's up to the drivers, it's up to the teams, it's teamwork really this sport and they call it endurance for a reason. But for now, back to you guys. Oh, now the mic switch is on. Right, I've just completed a load more driver interviews. Cue them being cut in now. And I'm here with Tom. Hi, say hi, Tom. Hiya, you alright? So this is the other person in the C1 Racing Club. We're just in the very posh area of Rab Sport. Everyone's got the nice boards here. So we've got Rab Sport, Sandown, and then Jolt Racing Team have all got those wicked boards in there. But it's been a good race so far. I have just uh, helped present a trophy for blooper of the race to Alan Preble, uh, my boss. Stream. So I don't know whether I am going to get the sack now. <laughs> Was that from the brake caliper? Yeah. But yeah, we'll go from there. I'm down with uh, Silver Lake MD, Alan Preble, and uh, we've actually got something very special to present to you from Robin Welsh. Now, it's our understanding that in qualifying this morning on lap one, with a brand new car, you had a bit of an incident. So, Robin's been handing out trophies all day. On the socials earlier, we got the Spirit of C1 that went to AASP Motorsport, but for blooper of the race, goes to Alan Preble for putting his brand new car in the gravel on lap one in qualifying. <laughs> but it also gives us a chance to chat to Alan Preble. Silver Lake have renewed the sponsorship with the C1 Racing Club. Alan, what does it feel sponsoring this series and Silver Lake's involvement? Well, it's very good. We really enjoy it. It's a good to participate in the low cost racing was what we're about, low cost parts. It's a great fit for us and uh, great camaraderie with every, all, the, all the teams. It probably helps that we're all local, so I mean, Robin, for yourself, what does Silver Lake bring to the table with the C1 Racing Club? Yeah, as any sponsor, it's you know, everyone can think, oh, it's just a sponsor, great, but it's just so much, so much more than that. You know, I've been dealing with Silver Lake since I was a kid, I've been racing my whole life and always gone to Silver Lake for a bit, so it's nice for that. And it's nice we're local, I say, I've known Alan for, for years and years, and a lot of the team as well. Um, and I say the fit is perfect because they do low cost parts, and this is low cost racing, so it just it couldn't be better. Absolutely. And Alan, from let's call it a sustainability point of view, I mean, motorsport is heading into an era now where everything needs to be more cost effective. Everything, as we just have the Silver Lake car coming behind us with an issue, <laughs> a bit of a bit of breaking news here. Tony Cooper's just pulled into the pit lane. Okay. Excuse the uh, swearing there, we'll come back to Alan, but from, from a sustainability issue in motorsport, how, does that mean that Silver Lake can sort of bring something to the party with that? Yeah, definitely. It's all going to help with our car footprint using used parts. You know, it's a, it's a low-cost car. You know, most people are buying parts from us, so it's a great fit, great fit for us. Fantastic, Alan. Well, there we go. Silver Lake back involved with the C1 Racing Club. Uh, we have got car number 458 in next to us with uh, some very, very badly worn tyres. We have a look right down to the core. Look at that. So um, certainly they are some very, very used tyres that have been on that car. And I can tell you that Mike Chapman did a mega first stint in that. So um, I think he's got most of the use out of those tyres. But for now, back to uh, Andy and Richard in the commentary box. Right, I'm just in the side room here now, so close to the end of the race. It's quite a close race between um, Mac Tools Racing, JW Bird chasing him down for the win uh, with Phil House and Nick Beaumont on the wheel. So I'm just at the end here at the pit lane. So what's going to happen is we've got the podium down there with everyone getting ready and setting up. And then what will happen is I'll do the podium and I'll hand back to Richard John Neal. Um, for that so we haven't i haven't really gone into detail on this uh, low res ramble so it kind of starts to give you a bit more of a view of what's going on behind the scenes i think when we do alton park and certainly when we do the 24-hour race at silverstone 
we could show you more of the goings on behind the scenes when I go and do uh, commentary. But it's been overall a good first C1 race. Uh, lots of snippets of interviews and commentary and goings on. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there.